Welcome back, scholars. Today we were talking about high horses courting. And this, this is a classic romantic comedy. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Uh, this is a, your same old song and dance. The, the story that we're all familiar with, only in a different setting. Uh, there's uh, a boy meets girl, boy wants girl, boy faces obstacles on the way to the girl, and overcomes them, thus gets girl in the end. Spoiler alert for any of you who didn't read the story. Um, the story is told by a narrator who relates to the story and sets it up for us. He says, you know, I know what it's like to want someone to, to love a girl and want a girl so badly that it makes you kind of sick. <laughs> it makes you feel terrible. Where you would do just about anything for them. And here's a story I heard about a guy named High Horse. Yeah. Um, Unlike the previous stories, though, there are, there are no spirits or no supernatural beings in this. Just human beings doing what human beings do. Uh, only a boy and the object of his affections and the obstacles that get in the way. It's the same story from uh, the Roman times, you know, from, um, old, say, Taming of the Shrew, all the way up to the Great Gatsby. Someone falls in love with someone, and then through adversity and over time, Winds up, winds up getting together with them. High Horse loves a girl and wants to marry her, so he goes about all the steps to marry you know, it's Things you would do today, right? You, uh, he essentially does the equivalent of borrowing money. He gets gets ponies, gets horses, and, and her father was like, nah, 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 "Don't be, don't bother me." And so he goes again. He goes, "Look, uh, all right." His friend says, "Look, I can loan you a couple of horses, and then you know when you get more horses, you can pay me back." Great. Okay, so he goes to the dad. I got four horses. Well, four horses. Too. No, 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 no. Don't bother me, kid. So, you know, he's all depressed. He gets sad. Gets down. Um, no matter what he does, his father keeps saying no. Now, apparently, the object of his affections, the the girl in the question, is a real looker because um, her parents hmm, tired of the bed at night, and so she won't be stolen. Might, maybe a little bit of an overcorrection. They're very, very protective parents, but, you know, different times, different culture. And so they give her this rawhide bed, and they tie her in at night. And so he he has no luck. He suggests, all right, well, hey, um, your dad your dad won't give me your hand, uh, no matter how many horses I offer him. Why don't we run off together? She goes, no, 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 no. I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I want to be bought like a fine woman. Forget the implications there in our modern tales, but think about think about that. Yeah, this, the girl's kind of standing up for herself, right? Was, no, I'm not going to sneak away in the night like a, like a bandit and marry you. I want to be one. Yeah, it's essentially what you say. He goes, I want to be valued. I want to be, you know, I want you to do the things that you need to do to to win my hand, win my my father's agreement here. Yeah. So. Um, Ultimately, this is a good thing, right? Yeah, she says, "Look, hey, no, I'm not. I don't want. To, we're going to go about this the right way." So he's all depressed, and he turns. And he's upset, and he, he says, "I can't." He's sicker than ever because he can't get this woman. He doesn't want to eat. Doesn't want to sleep. Guy's got it bad. But then, then the third character in this tri in this uh, this uh, trio of well, in this. Um, situation shows up, the bro, whose name happens to be Red Deer. Red Deer says, well, I'll tell you what, man, um, why don't you just steal her? You know, maybe she wants to be stolen. And it does say, the narrator does tell us that the, her parents never really uh, gave any thought to whether or not she'd want to be stolen. And he, goes, he goes, okay, yeah, we formulate a plan to steal, steal her. He goes, here's what we'll do. You'll sneak in the night, in the, in the night. Uh, I'll help you get in there. Um, you'll cut the bindings, we'll pull her out of the tent, uh, the teepee, you'll gag her and ride off with her on the front of your pony and live happily ever after. And he said, great, okay, let's do it. If you've seen romantic comedies, you have a, any at all, or have any, any sense of the formula, you know this isn't going to work, right? I mean, it starts to, give them, got to give them credit, they give it a, give them an A for effort. So they slip into the teepee, his buddy holds up, he's pulling up the stakes to let him in. Let him slip under the edge of the teepee, and so he starts cutting the uh, cutting the rawhide bindings. And each one makes a little pop, and every time he does, he's like, 
because you know, their family's right across the way. They're sleeping. And finally, so he gets going, but and nobody wakes up. So he goes, "All right, all right, I'm almost there." He gets down to her thighs, and you know, because they've really got her bound up in this, like head to toe. And the knife slips, and he pokes her in the leg, <laughs> and she screams. And so naturally, he's got to get out of here because her parents have woken up. So he slips out from under the tent. He and he and Red Deer take their two ponies, and they ride off, chased by half of the village. Um, managed to get away. Now, poor high horse. He's 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 bluer than ever because you know it's it's failed. He's like, you know, I can't I I can't seem to get her no matter what I do. And Red Deer Red Deer comes back to the rescue. He goes, I got an idea. You'll love this. Perfect plan. Flawless. Here goes. Okay. And so he says, all right, what you do? Take your clothes off. What? <laughs> Just strip naked. Trust me. Trust me. I got a plan. So he paints him white all over. Hmm. White. Like whiter than white. And then paints stripes on him. So we have this zebra looking creature. He paints stripes on the horse too. Very much a zebra looking creature. And he says, here's what we'll do. You'll, you'll slip into the tent all, all pale and all, you know, covered up and, and then you know, whiteness looking like, and uh, if it goes sideways, the village will think you're an evil spirit, and they'll be afraid to tr they'll be afraid to chase you. He goes, okay, fine. So the night comes, he slips underneath the edge of the tent, and um, you know starts to work. And at one point, um, uh, the girl's mother wakes up and says, "Old oh, man," nice term of endearment. He goes, "Old oh, man, there's somebody in the teepee," and he goes. Oh, of course there's someone in a teepee. Leave me, of course there's someone in a teepee. We're here in the teepee. Let me sleep. And he goes back to sleep and starts snoring and everybody else goes back to sleep. And then high horses just like, you know, lying here next to the tent, hoping, waiting. Oh, okay, okay. Everything's quiet. Everything's quiet. Well, about this time, he waits so long that it starts to get daylight. And Red Deer says, okay, I got to get out of here. They can't find me here like this. So he takes his two ponies and, and leaves. And it's getting close to daylight. And... The girl wakes up, sees sees High Horse, and naturally she screams, and High Horse screams, and he he barrels out of there. He tries, you know, it's like the the typical scene you've seen in, in a comedy where people go camping. Guy nearly tears down the teepee trying to get out of there, and takes off running, and then because of all the screams, half the village is coming with 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 tomahawks, axes, you know, bows and arrows, guns. He's in trouble. And so the elders say, wait, no, 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 don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. He could be a bad spirit. He looks like an evil spirit, and maybe he will bring even more trouble down on us. So he takes off. He lights out toward the river with the braves still in pursuit. Sorry, pursuit. Those who um, weren't put off by the by the warning says, we're going to catch this guy. We're going to see who this is. So he happens to find a hollow tree, and he dives into it and hides and the, uh, the warriors get close, and they think, okay, it's a water, it's an evil water spirit. He's gone back to the water. We're good. Poor red deer. <laughs> or poor, rather, high horse. Now he's more depressed than ever. He's man, I just, this is awful. I, I give up. I like, tried doing it the doing it the standard way, you know, the, the proper way. It didn't work. Tried stealing it twice. didn't work. I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to, I'm not going back to the village. I'm too ashamed. I'm too embarrassed. And, you know, I'm just going to go on the warpath all by myself. And Red Deer, got to gotta hand it to Red Deer here. Red Deer, ever the bro, says, you're not going by yourself. I'm going to come with you. Yeah. You may not have got the girl. Maybe he feels a little responsible because both his plans fell through here. And he goes, you know what? I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you be. You're not going to be alone. We're going to do this together. We're going to go and, you know, we're going to be hard traveling Native American men. We're going to, we're going to, you know, like, <laughs> think about, like, Kerouac and Ginsburg or whatever. We're going to go on the road or the path, and, you know, we're going to forget all this. So after a few days, they come up on a, on a, a by night on a crow camp, and they are sleeping, except for the guard. And they killed the guard who wasn't expecting anybody because the Lakota Sioux are far away, or so they think, except for red deer and high horse. And they managed to steal not one, not two, but a hundred horses. And they get away because all the horses kind of, you know, stampeded together. They're herd animals. So when their buddies took off, they all followed them. And so you have these these crow warriors on foot trying to catch up with them, but they can't. And so they ride hard for three days and find the camp, find their, find their camp. And they ride the horses in, drive this herd in. And he says to the old man, 
Is a hundred enough for you? And the old man says, wasn't about the horses. I just wanted my to give my daughter to somebody who was a man and who would would work, who would do things. Yeah. So ultimately, it's it's a funny story, especially with poor uh, high horse running for his life, and uh, and and all the foibles that surrounded it. But it's also kind of a, also kind of a cool uh, cultural story too. In other words, he says, look. You know, fathers, give your daughters to a guy who's going to work for her. Daughters, look for a guy who's going to work to keep work to earn your love, um, earn your um, earn your hand in marriage. Right? Um, not in some ways there's there's parallels to the uh, story of um, Jacob from the from the Bible. He worked for seven years for to uh, for his father-in-law to earn his wife, only to find out that. She had he had tricked him, so he worked another seven years to get his to get the object of his affections. All right, so there you go. Standard romantic comedy. Um, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And that was High Horse's courtship. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you in the next video.